Now, we've been hearing today, haven't we, how policing in some areas of the country are letting victims down according to the police watchdog. So what's the picture here in the capital? Well, Nick Beek, our Home Affairs correspondent, has the details. Nick? Thanks, Riz. Yes, today's report considers just how effective our police forces really are. How good are they at preventing crime in the first place? If we are robbed or our cars stolen or house burgled, how strong is the investigation that follows? And how do the police treat us if we become victims? Well, let's have a look at how they got on overall. Surrey is rated good, along with Thames Valley, the Essex Force and City of London Police. But in Bedfordshire, it's a different story. The police force there is said to be inadequate. Now, why is that? Well, it's said to be failing on crime prevention and also, crucially, looking after vulnerable people. If we look next door in Hertfordshire, the overall assessment there is that the police force requires improvement. But how about the Metropolitan Police, the biggest force in the country, looking after nearly 9 million people? Well, the Met officially also requires improvement. Although it's got pretty good at the moment at crime prevention, it's also failing vulnerable people, including children at risk of sexual abuse. There's another area of concern, and it's that one, lack of detectives. They're short of 700 detectives at the moment. Now, this is the story of why one detective walked away from the job that she loved. The workloads are relentless. That, that's what the problem is. Um, it just, there just isn't enough of us. There's work coming in all the time, and there just isn't enough hours in a day to do everything. I think, you know, officers are carrying sort of 20 crimes or more. You know, sometimes there's more than one victim in an investigation, more than one suspect. And you, you don't just get allocated um, an investigation and, and that's it, you're left to get on with it. There's work coming in, it's just constant. You know, there isn't, we can't say, sorry, we're full, <laughs> we're shut, you know, that, that needs to stop. It, it just carries on. It's just relentless, the stress. And a little bit of stress is good, you can thrive on it. But w when it's so high all the time, it, it's just not sustainable. You can't keep working like that. And it's exhausting. Y you know, I'd, I'd often wake up with headaches because I wasn't having enough sleep. And I just found that, I, I, thinking, actually, I, I, I don't think I can do this anymore. It made me feel a bit of a failure, to be honest, that I couldn't stick at it. This is all I ever wanted to do, and, um, you know, I thought it was a career I was going to do for, sort of, 30-odd years. And, um, you know, I worked so hard for it. Sorry. <laughs> it has actually, you know, with a really heavy heart that I have had to leave now. Well, today the Met told us they've got more detectives than ever before, but there is now this shortfall because there are more and more cases to investigate, including more people coming forward to report sexual abuse. So, although detectives are being recruited, it's simply not happening quickly enough to meet that demand. Now, on that overall assessment that the Met Police requires improvement, senior officers told us today that they thought that was unfair. There's always areas we can improve. But I think today's report, looking at the breadth of policing, misses some of the challenges we're facing today. It doesn't really pick up on the fact that we're putting many more resources into counter-terrorism, particularly firearms officers. We've spoken about that regularly, the 600 extra officers to help protect Londoners. And it doesn't really talk about those difficult choices we're making with squeezing resources, about making sure we put the, our officers in the best place possible to protect Londoners from the most dangerous threats. So a pretty strong response from the Met Police today. The reality is that all police forces are having to deal with more and different types of crime. As well as traditional offences, there's rising online and cybercrime too. So more for the police to do at a time when money is tight. Riz. OK, Nick, thank you.